So today we're going to talk about how to make a relative motion orthosis, um, also commonly known as a yoke orthosis. Sometimes you'll see these used with um, extensor tendon injuries, sagittal band injuries. Today I'm going to talk about how to make it to mobilize a PIP joint. So this can be used to uh, mobilize a stiff PIP joint. It could also be used to enhance tendon excursion if there's any scar adhesions um, to, that are limiting active range of motion of the PIP joint. So what you would do, is we're going to pretend that it's the middle finger that's affected here. I'll show you how to work on PIP extension as well as PIP flexion. It's all a matter of how you are splinting it in relation to the adjacent digits. So if you're looking to work on PIP flexion, if someone is very stiff and doesn't have that PIP flexion, you're going to position that middle finger in more hyperextension in comparison to the adjacent digits. So that way, as they're wearing the splint and they're flexing that finger, those powerful extrinsic flexor uh, muscles are then bypassing the MP joint and that force is really redirected to that PIP joint. If you want to work on extension, you are going to put that middle finger with that MP joint in more flexion in comparison to the adjacent digits. So then as they turn that way, open up, the extensor digitorum communis isn't really working on that MP joint as much. It's then redirected to that PIP joint and it's working with the interosseous muscles to work on M uh, PIP okay. extension. So the material I'm gonna use is the Orca cast. This is the six centimeter. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna cut it to the circumference of the hand. And what I'm gonna do is once I pull it out of the water, I'm gonna fold it into thirds and that's gonna give the splint stability. Um, and it's also gonna make sure that it's the size of the proximal phalanx. So that way she is able to bend the PIPs and the MP joints. So here I'm going to fold the splint into thirds. Okay, from within the elbow. And now I'm going to weave it under that middle finger and right around the adjacent digits. And I'm going to make sure to hold that middle finger in hyperextension in comparison to those adjacent digits. So this splint is going to be working on a stiff PIP joint when you're trying to gain flexion. And you want to make sure that you're clearing the PIP creases and then also that she'll have enough clearance to bend those MPs. So now this should be able to just slide nice off nice and easy and then she's going to slide it back on and then she will be able to make a fist all the way down and then all the way straight. So as you can see, as she makes a fist, it's limiting that MP flexion fully. So those strong extrinsic flexors are redirecting their force to that PIP joint.